about movies. So first, a little bit about me. If you don't know me, um, my name is Teresa Wong. I'm a graphic memoirist. I uh, published a book um, in 2019 about um, postpartum depression. Uh, and um, in it, there were no movies, but I did use a lot of songs. <laughs> This is a, a page from the book that uses a Coldplay song. Um, and I've also published a comic in The Believer um, about movies, um, uh, specifically the time that I watched The Joy Luck Club with my mom, um, hoping that it would bring us together. And uh, you'll have to read the comic to find out what happens. Tonight, we're going to make a comic version of a popular movie. So I hope um, you all have seen at least one movie in your life. <laughs> um, I'm actually the worst person to probably teach this uh, workshop because I watch very few movies. Um, and you're going to see as I um, show you my examples um, that every movie is from the 90s basically, <laughs> which is the last time I spent lots of time in movie theaters. So it is a challenge. Can you boil a whole movie down to just four comic panels? Um, but I think we're all gonna be able to rise to that challenge um, uh, through some prompts and also through just sheer ingenuity. And uh, it might not be possible but we're gonna have fun no matter what. So I just wanted to show you a little example of what we're gonna be doing. This is Jurassic Park, the movie, um, but in a comic version in just four panels, um, you'll see that I tried to hit some high points of the movie. If you've seen this movie, it'll be funnier. If you haven't, then sorry, I've just spoiled it for you. <laughs> but in the first panel, um, we get an introduction to Jurassic Park where dinosaurs have been brought back to life. Um, in the second panel, um, we bring in the naysayer, Jeff Goldblum, I don't remember his name in the movie, um, who wonders whether this is a good idea to bring dinosaurs back to life. In the third panel, we realize that velociraptors can open doors and they're kind of dangerous. And then in the fourth panel, um, have wrapped up the, <laughs> the velociraptor problem because T-Rex comes and saves the day. Why are we doing this? Um, I think it's actually a great exercise for exercising your visual storytelling muscles. Um, so much of comics is trying to compress the story down into a very small space. And um, this, doing this, bringing a whole you know, a two hour movie into just four comic panels will help you figure out ways to do that kind of compression. And plus, it'll be fun. So the first thing is, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of time because we're going to do a warm up exercise. But uh, while we're warming up, what I want you to think about is what movie would you like to distill down into four or into a comic? Uh, it could be a movie you love. It could be a movie you've watched. <laughs> it could be a movie that you haven't watched, um, but you kind of get the gist of. Or you can make up what happens in it um, just based on the title. I was um, joking with my husband that um, even though I haven't watched The Fast and the Furious, I bet you I could do a four panel comic about it. <laughs> just by starting with drawing a bunch of cars and then drawing a guy with sunglasses saying, I'm fast, and a guy with muscles saying, I'm furious, and then having them drive off. So I want you to have fun. That's the main thing. And um, we're just gonna start with a little bit of a drawing uh, warm up. So I'm just gonna switch to my drawing view. So for this, all you'll need is a scrap piece of paper, um, nothing fancy and something to draw with. Uh, this warm up is um, based on an idea from Linda Berry. 
um, who says that drawing blind is probably the best way to get your hand moving and to um, really let yourself go without being too judgy about what you're drawing. So um, I want you to have your pen and paper ready. We're going to have two minutes on our timer. And because it is movie night, uh, we're going to draw Batman with our eyes closed. So we've got the timer up. Let's close our eyes. I'm going to do this with you. So who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> and go. So think Batman. Um, the first thing I think of when I think Batman is his mask with the pointy ears. I'm gonna get his eyes in there somewhere. A bit of a grim expression. Um, bunch of muscles for his body. Maybe even a hint of a six pack for his abdomen. I know he wears kind of gloves, so I'm trying to convey that, although I have no clue where my pen is now. <laughs> um, I've moved down to the legs. I don't know where you are at, but I'm putting him in what I think are boots. And then I've realized I've made a fatal mistake already. I don't know where his body is, where I can put his bat symbol, but we gotta draw it anyways. So I'm making a little oval. Drawing the bat symbol. And then for me, I also need to put a cape on somewhere. I'm gonna have it flying in the air. Um, because superheroes often stand in the wind. And maybe I'll get fancy and try to put them on top of a building. All right, time's up. All right, let's see what you got. <laughs> this is not as bad as I thought. And, and you can see the essence of Batman is there, um, even though not all his body parts are in the right space. Oh, thanks for holding them up. They're looking great. Awesome. So now that we're warmed up, are you ready to move on with our movie again? What I'm asking is for you to get a fresh piece of paper um, and draw four panels. Um, I'm using a tr trick that I learned from my friend Andrene on Instagram, and I'm just using old post-it notes to make my panel borders because um, I can't draw straight lines very well. And this way I get nice, same size panels. And you can see I've used these same post-its lots of times. So it's not to be wasteful. So let's get our four panels down. And they don't have to be perfect. As long as they're roughly the same. Okay. This one went a little wonky. And I'm just going to start with the title because um, I know which movie I'm doing. Uh, 90s classic rom com. Called Sleepless in Seattle. A comic. Mm. 
All right. So if you've got your panels ready and your um, movie in mind, I'm going to walk you through starting the first panel um, and, uh, and then set a timer and, and we'll do it together for about five minutes. So in this first panel, um, I want you to pick a move or a, a part of the movie from the beginning, um, but that is not necessarily the very beginning scene because usually um, in movies, there's a little bit of a setup before things really get rolling. And um, this first panel should really do the job of introducing um, the action of the movie in a way. Um, and I'll explain that a little further when, when I get going. But um, for example, in Sleepless in Seattle, um, it actually, there was a whole section, I rewatched the movie just recently. And there was a whole section at the beginning that I totally forgot about where you get to know the characters a little bit. Um, and, and then um, the action really gets going when the female character, Annie, um, hears the male character, Sam, um, on the radio. So that's where I'm going to start my comic. Uh, why don't we set the timer for five minutes? And let's go. So here I'm going to introduce my characters. First by drawing them in that pivotal scene where um, Tom Hanks or Sam is talking on a radio call-in show. He got his phone. The phone turned out gigantic. It was the 90s, so that's OK. And he's got his son with him, who is a major character in the movie. So I want to introduce his son right here in the first panel as well. Um, don't worry if you can't draw the characters exactly as they look in the movie. Obviously, this is just a comic. If you need to do stick figures or kind of rough characters, that's fine too. I've got the curly hair for Tom Hanks, um, giving him an expression here to show that he's in distress. And I'm going to put in a little bit of dialogue to kind of tell us what this movie is about. Um, my wife died. And now I'm sleepless in Seattle. One trick I like to tell people is to draw your words first before putting your balloon around, um, your speech balloon, because often your words are going to be longer than you think. And in this case, I'm going to make my speech bubble do double duty because it's also going to show how the other main character, Annie, who's played by Meg Ryan, hears him on the radio. So I'm going to put Annie in here. And try to get one major kind of character feature of hers. And um, for me in this movie, I noticed that Annie had this glorious long hair always. So we got to emphasize that. Um, and if you need to add some details to kind of clarify things, comics is great for that. So I'm just going to label my characters. And I 
just forgot his name in the movie, so I'm just going to label him Tom Hanks. <laughs> what you can do. And another thing I'm going to do is just add some um, hearts around Annie just to show that she's kind of already falling in love just by hearing this dude on the radio. Little swirls. And in most comic panels, what I find helpful is just adding a bit of solid black to, um, I find that it just makes things feel a little bit more finished. So I'm just going to dress them both in black. Teresa, some folks in the chat are wondering if you could explain what that tool is. Oh, this, sorry. This is my, um, this is actually a, a very popular um, brush pen called the Pentel Pocket Brush. Um, that looks like this. Oh, our five minutes are up. Anyways, I'll explain it. And um, what I've done is uh, because sometimes I have problems with um, kind of, it's not carpal tunnel, but it's pre-carpal tunnel. What I've done is I've taken a foam paintbrush roller, put it over the pen and put a rubber band on it and made it more ergonomic for myself. So <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. Preserve your wrists and your hands and your arms. Um, hopefully everyone's got their panel done. Our time is up for the first panel. Um, and then in the second panel, um, what we're going to do is pick a scene from the still the first half of the movie where um, something happens to kind of complicate things or um, give a little bump in the action, uh, the rising action, something interesting and maybe iconic from the movie. Um, in my case, I'm going to pick the scene where Annie actually goes all the way to Seattle to meet this man she's only ever heard on the radio. Um, and she uh, sees him and he sees her, but she hesitates and they don't actually end up meeting. So let's set the timer for five minutes again. And go. So in this scene, I'm gonna rely a bit on narration, which is also a good comics trick um, to describe what's happening and move our story along. and goes to Seattle. To meet him. But realizes she's being kind of ridiculous. So I've left myself very little space here. Um, so I'm gonna rely on kind of really sketchy character here with not as much detail. Still got her face and I'm still gonna emphasize her long braid because that's part of her character design now in my comic. And 
the Tom Hanks character actually sees her from across the road. That's the back of his head with his curly hair. And he's thinking, what? And she's represented by this thought bubble with a question mark. And she is not sure what to say. If I recall, there was a car in the scene. This is also a fun way to test your memory of movies. Um, when I did my Jurassic Park example, I actually looked up some scenes after I'd drawn them and realized that everything I remember is totally faulty. <laughs> Here I am drawing the road. And again, filling in with a bit of black just to add dimension and polish. Not that you could call any of this polished work, but normally I would draw with a, a pencil and, and then ink over top of that. But again, with these workshops, I try to challenge myself um, and draw straight with marker and kind of just let that freewheeling feeling uh, lift my spirits. <laughs> I feel like the car should be black too then. If you're using colors, that's great too. Um, because there's lots of movies that kind of rely on sort of iconic scenes and iconic colors. And that can get things looking really close to what, um, what they actually look like on screen. So you'll see I made a bit of a mistake down here. My brush pen went a little over. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Um, I have a Uniball Signo white pen and I can just kind of cover that up a little bit. And our time is up. So now we're on to our third panel. In this one, I want you to think of a scene from the latter part of the movie. So after the first half. And um, this one also is a complicating scene, um, something that makes, um, makes the action move forward. Uh, something important that happens that kind of drives you towards the end. And so in my example, um, even though Annie and uh, Tom Hanks don't meet when she goes to Seattle, um, his son is determined that they're gonna get together. So uh, the son decides to fly to New York by himself. I think he's eight years old in the movie, <laughs> somehow gets, um, gets onto a plane and, and uh, that forces Tom Hanks to follow. So um, that's the scene I'm picking. Again, you know, try to think iconic. Um, there, there's a lot of certain scenes from movies that everyone remembers. And um, for the movie you've chosen, try to think of a scene from the second half that everyone remembers. Okay, we're setting the timer again and let's go. So 
Oops. Oh, my pen. The sun decides oops, to fly to New York City by himself. to me, Eddie. And for this one, I'm just going to represent that um, symbolically with the drawing of a map of the United States. And, you know, this actually happens in the movie too. Um, they show a map. This is going to be the worst drawing of the United States you've ever seen, because I sort of have an idea as a Canadian of what it looks like, but <laughs> I'm not uh, an expert for sure. Actually, I don't even know if I could draw Canada as a map, but <laughs> um, and Seattle is, I believe, somewhere around here. And I'm just going to draw a little plane lifting off. heading in the direction of New York. Maybe I'll uh, add a little star to des destination where New York sort of is. Since I've got a little time, I'm still going to try to fix up this area. It's not working. So I think we have about a minute left. Yeah. So you can see what I've tried to do also is um, put some variety in my panels. The first one is this kind of split panel with um, medium shots or close-ups of characters. Second one's a little pulled further away um, using some um, sort of dialogue. <laughs> and the third one is more like a diagram and, uh, and more, way more symbolic. Um, I find mixing it up like that um, gives your comics a little bit of a more of a dynamic feel. And what's nice about drawing movies is that sometimes the, well, the director has already thought of all that for you. Um, so you can practice your different types of scenes uh, without even thinking about it really. All right, um, time's up for that panel. And finally, to the last panel. So for this one, it's, it's really up to you um, how you want to wrap up your movie. Um, you could go with the final scene, although usually I find that there's actually a climactic scene just 
before the end of the movie where um, it really sums up everything and is maybe even more visually interesting. So um, think about how um, you can kind of end the story without um, always choosing the very end of the movie. So in my case, um, I'm going to choose the scene where they meet at the Empire State Building um, and uh, presumably fall in love. And uh, again, I'm going to use a, an iconic um, view instead of drawing where, where they actually meet. Um, I'm going to draw the Empire State Building from the outside because um, at the end of Sleepless in Seattle, um, it's, it's actually more focused on the, the building itself than the people. So let's set the timer again. And here we go, final scene. Here they meet. And they fall in love. If you're wondering at all, I'm using, um, this is my new favorite pen. It's called a zebra pen. I find it has nice line variation. And it's available at most um, stationery or art, art stores and online. So the Empire State Building has a pretty iconic look to it. Which is helpful because anytime you draw something iconic and instantly recognizable, it actually doesn't matter if you draw it perfectly. as long as you get the broad strokes in. I'm gonna draw a big heart on my Empire State Building to represent how the two characters have fallen in love. Color it in. One of my favorite things is inking actually with this brush pen. You really get into a very meditative state. Just filling in blacks. There we go. And um, because movie play or movie, um, because music plays such a huge part um, in this movie, uh, there are lots of old, um, old classic songs used in it. I'm going to add a little bit of music to or music lyrics. And a little Louis Armstrong in it. Give me a kiss to build a dream on. Speaking of 
bad memories i totally thought that this song was how this movie ended and then i went back and watched the last scene and realized it was a completely different song but i'm sticking to it because i like this song better than how they ended it <laughs> so we've got about 30 seconds left after you're winding down. And since I've got a little spare time, I want to remind you that uh, you would love to see the results of your comic from tonight's workshop um, on social media. I've got um, a Twitter that I don't use very much at by Teresa Wong. Um, and then an Instagram that I'm on constantly, and that's by underscore Teresa Wong. And also the Believer would love to see your work. So on Instagram, they're at Believer Mag. And um, we've got a hashtag going. It's uh, Friday Night Comics. Okay, our time's up. So we've drawn a movie in four panels. Um, I'm really excited to see what you've done. I, I'm hoping um, that this will be the first of many Believer film festivals. <laughs> um, so if you'd like to share, uh, just put your hand up, uh, put your video on and put your hand up. And I'll just leave mine up there and put my video back to me. And uh, the, please let us know where you're calling from um, or joining from. And uh, I'd love to see your work. Hi, hey, Teresa. Oh, it's so great to see you. <laughs> yeah, great to see you. And this was a great class. Um, so I did this French movie from the 70s from Jacques Demy called Donkey Skin or oh, Podon, wow. if you know the French. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fairy tale retelling um, of a, a princess who, uh, escapes from her kingdom because her dad wants to marry her after the death of her mom. So okay. here you see, <laughs> it's it's a very dark fairy tale, but it starts off with um, the daughter asking for several dresses. And when he is able to create those dresses, she's like, if you, um, what did I write here? If you want to marry me, kill your donkey first. And the thing about the donkey is that it can uh, poop gold. <laughs> so he does, <laughs> he kills the donkey. Um, and she was instructed to do all this by her fairy godmother, who is right here. Um, and her fairy godmother tells her to wear the donkey skin as the disguise. And oh boy. that's a lovely <laughs> yeah. drawing. I love the X's out on the donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little sad dead donkey. Um, and she's saying here, take, uh, run away and take my wand and uh, donkey skin is the only name given to her. So donkey skin says, thank you, fairy godmother. <laughs> um, when she escapes to another kingdom, uh, and this is another thing with Jacques Demy, but he uh, starts off with a blue kingdom and she runs away to a red kingdom. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, and uh, during this moment alone, uh, she removes her donkey skin and really reveals one of the beautiful dresses that um, the king had made for her while the prince is spying on her. And he's like, oh my gosh, I saw you without your donkey skin and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at the very end, uh, you find out that the king has married the fairy godmother. So they're happy. They're like, okay, cool. This prince is awesome. Um, and so they get to live happily ever after. And the thing with um, Jacques Demy is that there's a lot of anachronism. So they fly in a helicopter to sort of bless the couple. And then there's this like parade of elephants and other oh, things from around great. the I world to celebrate them. I love how you packed so much into those four <laughs> panels. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you again. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Alice. Um, I did a comic of the Star Wars prequels because I think they are very ridiculously silly in the plot. Um, so I agree. 
So this is when in the first movie, what I got out of it was that Anakin was liking Padme and that was ridiculous because he was way younger than her. And then <laughs> in this one, he killed all those people because um, they killed his mom and then she still loves him and which is major foreshadowing. And then he becomes Darth Vader and then the twins are born, which until the next OG Star Wars movies is not really a big deal. <laughs> I love it. I love how you you went above and beyond in the three movies in just four panels. <laughs> Amazing. Hi. Okay, is this me? My oh my god. Yeah, we can All do right. <laughs> okay, hey there. Okay, so yeah, I just did. I mean, it's a little spoiler alert, so I hope I don't ruin it for anybody. Old classic movie, Color of Money. We got Paul Newman. I changed the title to Paul Newman Admits He Needs Glasses. <laughs> and then the first panel, you've got young hot, tot, young hot shot Tom Cruise playing pool, pool. And then he's like, he's killing it in the club. Paul Newman's relegated to the background. He's the old kind of mentor, crusty mentor. And then amazing shot in the film Paul Newman gets the, he gets the glasses and then we realize that he was the hero all along redemption tale old age he embraced it and he's back to killing it so that is great I love it all right well this is great and this is my mama back here you can't see her because it's <laughs> the lights in her face but she's in too, too embarrassed to show it but she's a pretty woman and it was great awesome so thank you thank you oh hi cat <laughs> Okay, so I did one. This I I um this is a actually kind of sad. Like the first episode goes from zero to a hundred, really okay. fast. We're ready. It's it, it gets it's like it's happy and then it, it's not happy. What what is it? It's Demon Slayer, an anime I like. Oh, my husband loves that movie. <laughs> it's 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 actually no, it's not a movie. It's oh it's, the it's, show the series. manga. Or I did the first anime. episode. Nice. It's he's saying he's gonna go sell coal because that's what they did because they didn't you know they wanted food and they're like okay and then it says later in the clouds because I thought that would be cool and then they die <laughs> because of <laughs> but but she she's not dead everybody else is dead he he him and her are alive that's it practically about it and then this is him trying to get her to the hospital well, this is him trying to get her to the hospital sorry I'm confused and this is her turning into the, the Spoiler, this is him, her turning into a demon. Sorry, I probably should have started that at the beginning, but I don't care. This is her turning into a demon. Um, they're not, and, um, uh, then they're, um, then she fights him. And this is him, and this is the other guy trying to go, you know, save him. I tried my best. No, it looks great. No, I, I love how you varied the panel sizes, too. That's they're not excellent. cats in the real anime. They're, uh, humans, but I decided to make them that way. Do you I'm want gonna... me to do mine? No, okay. Hi, where are you joining from? Um, hi, I'm Natalie. I'm from Sacramento, California. Um, and I did also a very obscure 70s uh, foreign film called House. It is a um, horror movie, one could say. And it's a, a very fun movie. So... I realized it was kind of hard. There are seven main characters um, in the movie. You did a good job getting them all in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fit all their faces in. Um, and so one of the characters says, hey, let's go to my aunt's house. And here's all their different heads. And then the next one is them kind of arriving at the aunt's house. Creepy house in the back. She's got a cat and she's saying hello girls very mm -hmm. ominously. And soon enough, the movie turns into horror as uh, her name is Fanta. She's kind of like the fantastical character is getting something out of a well. And she's like, oh, it's so hot out. And it turns out it is one of her friend's heads. She's <laughs> out. And then the movie turns into pure chaos. There's all sorts of things happening. People losing their fingers, getting their heads stuck in a lamp and yeah, no, I can see it all. You've got it all. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Oh, 
Here we go. Hi. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's 11 in the morning here. So, yeah. Well, hello oh. from the future. <laughs> um yeah so i did muriel's wedding which is a great oh, i love that movie. Flick. yeah yeah i think i got a bit bogged down in the details because i think i might know it a bit too well because i'm like i can't leave that bit out but um so we've got muriel getting broken up with by her best friends her mum giving her a, a blank check which enables the the plot to happen Mm. Uh, her green card marriage to a South African swimmer while her best friend calls bullshit on it <laughs> and then them running away at the end. Oh, I think you got it. That <laughs> I remember all those parts of the movie. That's wonderful. Thank <laughs> you. Hi, I did uh, Faust, the 1926 silent. Uh, wow. So it's the plague descends on the people and this is like the devil hanging over the town and, and then all the dead bodies. Um, Faust, a good man, prays for a way to cure the people. The devil gets there first. Faust enjoys his deal with the devil, perhaps more than he should. And he's saying, I'm young, I'm lusty, I'm rich, uh, party, party. He loses himself and is about to pay the price and an angel shows up and stomps the devil's ass. Nice. And the, this is the devil's ass. <laughs> and he's saying, stop. And then it says, phew, Faust, that was a close one. Oh, that's so great. And I love the compositions of your panels and all the black too. It's excellent. Well, I picked a movie that has very stark images, so... <laughs> Hi, Joseph, we got you back. <laughs> Hello, yes, sorry, I had to run off real quick. Uh, so I'm Joseph, I'm calling in from Western Pennsylvania and I decided to draw the last movie that I didn't sleep through, which was Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> this is able to show up. So um, in the first panel, it's, this is going to be hard to see, but um, I have Maverick and Goose up there in the clouds at the beginning of the movie. Uh, my second panel here, I have uh, the shirtless volleyball scene, the famous <laughs> scene. Um, then here I have a split panel. The top is Maverick saying, I quit. Bottom is him saying, I'm in. And then the last panel is Maverick and not Goose with a frowny face. Oh, that's awesome. You, you only missed one scene that I love is the singing, you've got that loving feeling. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I was yeah. thinking about where to put that in, but I couldn't figure I out how to make it. Four panels fit. is just too few. That's great, though. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm from, I'm in Nanaimo, BC, right now. And this is my comic. So I did The Labyrinth. So this is sort of the beginning where main character has to find her baby brother in the labyrinth. Right. And so she's like asking this guard keeper like where the entrance to the labyrinth is. And then like a lot of stuff happens, but I kind of <laughs> skip to this part where this evil guy is like trying to trap her in a bubble. And she's like, oh, I'm being tricked. This isn't real. And she actually breaks the bubble. And at the very end, I decide to actually include all these little characters. I haven't actually inked them yet that are like coming with her, but she has to like go find Toby on her own, her little brother. And then I love this line. She's like, cause this guy is like a super manipulator. Hmm. So at the very end, she's like, you have no power over me. Yeah, that's a like, great line. And, and I love the bubble panel and, and how it's part of the movie, but also a panel. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that was that. Hello, oh, um, I, I did the French New Wave film, The 400 Blows. Everyone's got such good taste. <laughs> uh, this, this scene is just showing um, and, uh, Antoine and his friend running around going to the cinema. This is when he sees his mom uh, having an affair. And this is when he's being, when he's sent to that school and uh, has to do the interviews, the uncomfortable interviews. And then this is the classic end scene where he's running out to the ocean and just- That's 
yeah no, that's now. great and uh, you know you've managed co- to convey so much without any words and that's <laughs> that's amazing that's thanks great. thanks so much for doing this oh thank you hi um so i i don't know if it's cheating this is like one of the most iconic movies of all time it's the wizard of oz <laughs> it's not cheating. And- <laughs> So, and of course, there's a lot, so much stuff going on in the whole movie. It's no, no like down moments, but um, this is this beginning with Dorothy looking out the window. There's the witch going by in her broom and the tornado and um, Toto is a little bit of a lump here <laughs> and just calling out Auntie M. She always has her braids, you know, in her little gingham dress. And then we jump forward and she's now in Oz. In the background, you can see the witch has been crushed under her house her little curled up feet um and and here's glenda the good witch who came down and gave dorothy the red slippers off of the witch's feet and this of course is the yellow brick road that she's about to head out on um then really jumping ahead she's with all her pals um the tin man the lion the scarecrow toto everyone he's got her ruby slippers on and they say wizard can you help us um, and then leaving out a lot of stuff, of course. And finally it's time for her to get, to go home and she's clicking her Ruby slippers together three times and she and Toto are heading hopefully back home. Oh, that's great. And your use of color is just spot on, right? <laughs> Hi. Hello. Uh, I picked something that I felt was really easy to distill <laughs> something <laughs> from my adolescence. Uh, so the movie is Titanic. Oh, yes. And the first scene we have here, um, I thought it was very memorable. Her giant hat approaching the docks and the ship. And there's Leo on the top of the ship. She's saying, oh, and he's saying, wahoo. <laughs> and then the next scene I chose was you know, when she's about to throw herself off the ship and she's saying, what is she saying? I'm too privileged to be happy. And he says, no, don't do it. I'm naked. Cause if you'll recall, he starts to get undressed for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, and here's a hungry shark, not actually in the movie. Uh, and of course you, you might've thought I should have drawn <laughs> the naked drawing scene with the part of the scene. <laughs> But this one really burned itself in my memory more. Yeah, no, this is iconic too. So you got it. <laughs> so yeah, that's them, you know, in the car <laughs> and it's rocking. And once again, she's saying, oh, and he's saying, wahoo. And then uh, the last scene is on uh, the top of the door or whatever it was. They're floating in the water. <laughs> There's the ship sinking in the background and some screams coming from it. And I always felt this scene was a little heartless. Like, I'm pretty sure there was room on that door for I him. T- I think so too, but. <laughs> right? That's her saying, bye Felicia, because she obviously just didn't want to be around anymore. <laughs> oh, I love the humor you've added to it. I think you've made the movie better, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for letting me share. <laughs> thank you. All right, I guess that's, uh, we've uh, got, or was it that we have three more, chance for three more, is that it? Okay, I think that's the time. So yeah, thanks for sharing everyone. I uh, Anyone who didn't get a chance to share, actually even those who did, please um, put your work up on social media and tag it um, with uh, hashtag Friday Night Comics and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to see all of your work on Instagram or Twitter. And thanks again for joining me. This was so much fun. I knew it was going to be fun, but I didn't know it would be this fun. And so thanks for participating and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Thank you so much.